Hi guys, Ronnie here and welcome to the workshop. Uh, if you're into cycling for a while now, then you probably know that most people uh, take care of the chains by using some of these, one of these or maybe both, but usually it's not something people uh, put a lot of attention or work into even if they're racing at a high level. But uh, if you watch my channel, then you know that my uh, chain maintenance kit looks a bit more like this. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit of a difference in both the things needed and the time put into preparing my drive chains. But you may have asked yourself, why, why do I do it? Why do I bother so much? Why do I put so much time and effort into reducing my drive chain friction? by boxing my chains and some other stuff as well that I've shown you earlier. Well, there are three very good reasons uh, for this. And the first one, probably the biggest one, so number one reason for me, is that the gains uh, from reducing your chain and whole drive train friction are completely universal. What do I mean by this? Uh, most of the time when we talk about bikes, then the performance figures are considered weight and aerodynamics and these quite uh, well they can contradict each other because if you make a bike more aerodynamic chances are it's going to be heavier as well so there is no one universal value that you need to pursue while as a lower friction chain is always going to make you faster uh, whether you are riding at 50 k's per hour on a time trial bike, on a track bike in a velodrome, on a road bike in a bunch, in a sprint, on a 20% climb, on a commuter bike, riding to work, on a mountain bike, on a BMX, any chain driven bike. If you take that chain, take care of it well and reduce its friction, it's going to make you faster. No, ma no matter what bike you're riding, where you're riding, and how you're riding it, how much power you're putting out, the gains are always going to be there. Uh, the second reason, also a very good one, so number two, uh, is that these mods compared to some other ones are quite cheap. Uh, because, well, the whole waxing kit that I use, I think it's quite advanced and it doesn't really cost more than. Uh, let's say 100 euros maximum for a season and it can save you substantial amount uh, of power and watts but if you try to gain the same uh, amount of performance by upgrading your wheels, upgrading your frame, upgrading anything else then it's going to be uh, a lot more expensive so it's not just that it's universal and very effective, it's very cheap compared to the other upgrades as well. Uh, and then finally, another great, great thing about uh, boxing your chain and reducing your drive train friction by some other ways is that it's not just a performance mod. What do I mean by this? Of course, if you reduce your friction uh, of your drive chain, if you box it, you make it faster, more slippery, and much, much cleaner as well. And that means your chain is going to last a lot longer, it's going to be a lot cleaner, your chain rings are going to la last longer, your cassettes are going to last longer, and everything else on your bike, basically. Uh, the jockey wheels, the derailers, and so on. So it's not just a performance mod, it's a durability mod as well, and that just adds up to the cost effectiveness of the upgrade itself. Uh, on my chain boxing videos, I got uh, quite a lot of questions uh, regarding this topic. So if you're watching this video and you know my channel, then I really ask it if something is not clear for you uh, in the processes in the previous videos, I'd like to put your questions in the comment section down below so I can make a separate video about addressing these questions. 
Now, if you want to see the boxing videos themselves, then don't forget to uh, tune into my channel and subscribe. It's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.